Good day, everybody. My name is Arthur Carabia. I'm in charge of running uh, ICMA's Asset Management and Investor Council, and I have the pleasure to be joined today by uh, our two uh, vice uh, chair of AMIC, uh, Stefan Jana from AXA Investment Manager and uh, Massimiliano Castelli from UBS Asset Management. Uh, good morning to uh, both of you. For the purpose of this annual conference, we wanted to provide you with a brief overview of uh, what kept us busy in the last 12 months and where we're heading next. Stefan, uh, uh, we're gonna start with, uh, with you and uh, the regulatory developments. What are the main uh, regulatory developments that are currently uh, keeping us uh, busy at AMIC? Okay, thanks Arthur and uh, uh, good day for everyone. Uh, as the Asset Management and Resource Council, AMIC, has mainly two working groups working on two different types of topics. The first one is on sustainable finance. The second one is on risk management as applicable to uh, funds. Uh, and during the last 12 months on the sustainability side, uh, the work of the working group on sustainability had a lot of things to do uh, due to the, uh, uh, in particular, the European agenda we had to cope with uh, the level two, the implementing measures of the Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation, SFDR. We had also to work on the taxonomy. It was the second important work to, to, to work on. The third one was even more critical in the very short term, which is uh, MIFID level two measures uh, regarding uh, the ESG preferences of clients uh, to which we'll have to propose uh, sustainable investments. And the last topic that we uh, touched upon was on uh, possibly elaborating an EU eco-label for investment funds. This is for sustainability. And regarding the risk management working group, which was the other uh, cornerstone of AMIC uh, uh, practical work on a daily basis. Uh, and so basically, uh, since the crisis, we have in particular issued a response to IOSCO, the International Securities uh, Regulatory Body. We had issued uh, so, such a response, demonstrating that regarding fund liquidity management, management uh, the European framework, being the pure EU or UK or even Swiss uh, uh, framework, was fully valid to manage crisis situations like the one we had to cope with last year. So, and still ahead, uh, we are going to uh, dig further in IFMD review because, as some of you may know, IFMD is going to be reviewed by the end of this year. Uh, so, Stefan, this, is, this essentially means that uh, we're going to do uh, more of the same for the upcoming 12 months, right? We will have to be more engaged with the Commission on IFMD review uh, during the, uh, next, uh, for the next year. Uh, on the sustainability front, uh, we will have also to go uh, even further in connection uh, on that front with regulators. First of all, at EU level, as I said, on uh, data from issuers, the European Commission wants to enhance uh, the disclosure of sustainability data by issuers, what is called uh, the review of NFDR, and now it's uh, CSRD. Uh, this is a critical point. And still on sustainability, I think that AMIC has also, will have also to tackle two topics. First of all, the Biden administration <laughs> is very keen, as you know, on sustainability to be more committed in, as in uh, EU, as a, as an, uh, as the US uh, to uh, provide for an US view regarding sustainability. We will have to take into account that new uh, a U.S. momentum and sustainability in our work, and still on sustainability, we will have also to take into account a new dimension and a pure international one with the IFRS, uh, which wants to promote and to develop now a sustainability standard board, SSB, uh, to facilitate the convergence of uh, disclosure of data by issuers. As investors within AMIC, we think it's definitely critical as, as far as possible to get convergent views among regulators at global level, and not only European one, uh, to facilitate our work of investors while we have to invest in issuers from any part of the world. This is on sustainability. Uh, as I also mentioned, uh, we will have a, a FMD, not uh, the least, uh, digitalization, 
uh, will be a growing topic for AMIC. Digitalization is on the shelf of many regulatory uh, uh, bodies, not the least the EU, but not also not, not only, also in the UK, in the US, and even in uh, Asia. On digitalization, we will have to develop our own skills and involvement in that. Uh, and last but not least, we must remain agile on any unknown topic yet, from a regulatory perspective, to be able to keep interaction in a flexible manner and reactive manner with any initiative that regulators might launch in the coming months. Max, those regulatory uh, priorities uh, of, of AMIC also corresponds to important uh, business and, and market trends. Um, can you maybe start uh, um, commenting on the, the fintech aspect? The deployment of uh, digital capability by asset manager is actually quite wide ranging and include advanced analytics and big data, internet of things, integration, artificial intelligence, and of course, uh, blockchain, and we'll have uh, multiple applications across the whole industry. In several cases, uh, digitization is actually an efficiency play, which will allow us a manager to do things with less resource and cost. And I believe this is very important for clients as well, because ultimately this will translate into more time efficient service for client and uh, lower uh, fees. However, I would also like to stress the fact that digitization is also a transformation for the asset management as new products and strategy will become available. For instance, in the, in the event where we discuss tokenization, one of the main implications of the widespread use of uh, this uh, uh, technology will be to be able to monetize more alternative asset classes and provide them a wider access to, to these uh, uh, to smaller investors. Last but not least, I would like to stress as well an important topic that we are also monitoring very closely, which is the launch of the so-called central bank digital currency, which also has the potential to be transformational for the entire financial architecture. Regarding sustainability, will it continue to be a, a driving force in the, in the market, uh, Max? Uh, yes, absolutely. I believe that the sustainability is uh, in a, uh, irreversible trends and to a large extent transformational for the industry. So this means that uh, the key principle of sustainability will remain a very important driver for all as a manager. On the other end, there is a clear alignment between sustainability and long-term investing. And this is, I think, what makes this a very exciting for the majority of the asset manager who work in cooperation and in partnership with institutional and the wholesale clients. So why this is happening? Well, first of all, the sustainability index have shown very clear that they are able to provide the protection during period of market volatility. That's exactly what happened during the sell-off in March 2020. The coronavirus has reinforced the feeling among investors and uh, individuals and politicians that global and coordinated efforts must be made in critical areas to avoid a dramatic risk in the future. And that's exactly the type of challenge that, uh, for instance, climate change opposed to us all. We are also seeing uh, central banks pondering whether they needed to contribute more to the greening of the financial system. So definitely like a digitization, sustainability is a major trend that will remain of fundamental importance for the future work of AMIC. What are the short, uh, medium term risks to be considered uh, by fund managers? The market believe at the moment that we are in the middle of a cyclical increase in inflation, and I tend to uh, believe as well in this view. However, we cannot rule out that eventually inflation, rather than remaining a simple transitionary uh, phenomenon, might become a more enduring future of the global economy. Should this uh, be the case, the impact on asset classes, on asset, on asset price, would be large with several repercussions across the industry after many years of easy money and soaring asset supplies. So, Adamic, we will continue monitoring how inflation outlook will develop. 
The second important uh, uh, follow from the, um, from the pandemic, of course, has been uh, the massive fiscal expansion experience in order to sustain the global economy in the face uh, of the impact of COVID-19. Eventually, sooner or later, the world will have to deal with this challenge, and this is also likely to become a big political issue. More taxation of high income and wealth appear to be the most logical consequence over the medium long term, but I believe this will prove very controversial and will have implication for asset managers as well. Last but not least, I would like to mention the geopolitical risk, which I would, I would say concern mainly the so-called deglobalization risk and market fragmentation. In fact, the confrontation between the US and China is a strategic one, which will remain a central future of the global economy for decades to come. It will also have an important implication for the financial service industry, as we will experience more fragmentation in global market and eventually more barriers to the free movement of capital. For us, a manager which operates in a, into a global type of environment, this uh, type of risk will have to be monitored very closely. Finally, I would like to mention very briefly the question of income inequality. This is something that has been going on for very long, but actually has been uh, in some way strengthened by the pandemic. And I believe that the financial markets in the new world we are living in, where several stakeholders are involved, We'll also have to take into account of that into the broader concept of sustainability that is starting to spread across all our investment areas. Uh, thank you all for listening to us. Uh, and thank you both Stefan and Max. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the annual conference.